Okay guys, welcome back to the channel and I was about to open up with a gigantic war, but I don't want to scare you because, well, I'm, I'm a big scary person. So, uh, massive, massive news, the new Auric War Clan book is available for pre-order now and Games Workshop were very, very kind in sending us this to review. After playing a game with Ian... And after reading, I enjoy stuff myself. Uh, what I will say is I don't think it's better or worse. Um, I think until we learn the combos and stuff, it, it it's a change, let's say. Um, I do like the fact that they are still two separate armies. They're just both in the same book. And if you do want to combine them into a Grand Alliance Orc, let's say, uh, then you do have the availability to be able to do that. So, there is... Some quite nasty combos, I think, that, that's going to come out of this book that we're going to see. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you see a little bit more Orcs, um, particularly Savage Orcs, uh, and a couple of Iron Jaw players surface on the tournament scene, certainly to try things out uh, and see where they get. Now, I don't agree or disagree with the fact that they put them both together. I just like the fact they've acknowledged both armies and give them new rules. So, as far as I'm concerned, that is a win. I do love this cover mind. All of the covers have been very, very cool recently. A lot sort of grim darker as opposed to the uh, earlier battle tomes that were really colourful trying to entice people in. I mean, look at that. <laughs> yeah, and the bone splitters one's very similar. I don't have the old bone splitters one. So, what I'm going to go through is I'll, I'll certainly compare the Iron Jaws to what's changed. The Savage Orcs, I'm not as sure as what they were previously. Uh, only what Ian and I covered in the game. Uh, so I will mention those as we go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight in and go straight to the back and you guys want to see points, don't you? So, Savage Orcs, 10, 120 points for 10, maximum of 30 for 300. They are battle line. Uh, Maniac Weird Knob, 120. Auric Mega Boss, 150. Auric War Chanter, 110. Weird Knob Shaman, 110. A Savage Big Boss 100, a War Dock is 80, a Wargog Prophet is 160, Gordrak is 400, 540, sorry, uh, Mega Boss on More Crusher is 460, uh, and then Iron Skull's Boys is 80. Ard Boys, they are now in a unit of 5. I don't know if that's good or bad, I mean it's handy, it's definitely handy. But they were um, they were 180 for 10 in the General's Handbook, so I think that's um, you know I, th I think it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, they did change a lot. Or Oric Brutes 140, Gorgrunt is 160. I think they went up. I think they were 140 before. Uh, Big Stabbers are now 100 points. Um, Ball Boy Maniacs are 140. Um, Wow, they are battle line. I've just realised that. Uh, there's a couple of good combos with them, which I'll actually cover off in a few moments. Uh, Savage Ball Boys, 130. Uh, Savage Auric Arrow Boys, 120. And More Boys, 120. Um, and then the War Scroll Battalions. Now, the battalions have all changed entirely. So the Bone Splitters are going to be pretty tough, I think. Um, the... Monster Hunter's ability has changed. They've got, you know, a fair amount of command abilities and uh, allegiance abilities that they can take. So you've got tireless trackers. Um, after armies are set up, but before the first battle round, half the Bone Splitters units in a Bone Splitters army can move up to five inches. If both players can move units before uh, the battle round begins, they must roll off, and the winner chooses. So I don't even think Ian realised that one uh, in the battle report. Uh, war paint is a little bit different uh, rather than just having essentially a six up invulnerable save uh, It's just a six up ignore damage uh, So it does go on damage uh, Monster hunters you choose which one you want now rather than rolling the d3 uh, So you can move an extra three inches when you pile in add one to hit rolls or an unmodified wound roll of a six against a monster is a mortal wound in addition You've then got spirit of the beasts as well you don't take battle shocks for a bone splitter unit if any monsters were slain uh, by wounds inflicted by that unit in the same turn. Uh, command abilities, you've got the bone splitter's war. 
Um, and it's pretty much the same thing, but it's only for bone splitters. Uh, it does say extra hits. Several abilities allow bone splitter units to score two hits instead of a one on an unmodified six. If two or more such abilities apply at the same time, you score one extra hit for each ability, which means it does stack, which is brutal. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that, that's massive. Uh, there is a combo that Ian kind of discovered by accident in the battle report, uh, and I'll, of course, cover this uh, throughout this review. Um, command abilities, um, so unmodified wound roll of an attack made with a melee weapon by the general uh, is a 6. In addition to normal damage, uh, it does a mortal wound. So it just means it doesn't apply to monsters. It, it applies all the time. Uh, you can get an extra command point on a 4+. Um, at the start of your hero phase, uh, the Great Hunter. Uh, if this general is part of her army, you can use the Tireless Track or Battle Trait. You can move eligible units 8 inches instead of 5 inches. Um, Power of the Beast, add 2 to the general's wounds, add 2 to bravery. Uh, you can fight a second time if there are any monsters within 3 inches. Pretty decent. Um, the Bone Splitter Wizards, um, command traits, you can get D3 extra command points. I'd want to cast into spelling and no an extra spell. It's the same as that in Jaw 1. Uh, artifacts of Power. Um, heal D6 wounds allocated to the bearer. Uh, I'd want a bravery for Bone Splitter units within 18. Once per phase, you can reroll one hit roll, one rune roll for an attack made by the bearer, and you can reroll one save roll for an attack that targets him. Uh, glowing, glowing Tattoos. Uh, when you use the war pain trait, you're going to get uh, a wound or a mortal wound on a four instead of a six. Great, great Drake Tooth. Um, if the wound roll is a six, you double the damage. Uh, and pick one of the bearer's melee weapons, add one to the attack characteristic. So it's an extra attack. That's okay. Um, however, the artifacts for the wizards. Um, set an enemy unit within 12 uh, and roll three dice. If you do so, each roll of a 2 plus inflicts D3 mortal wounds on that unit. Each roll of a 1 inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the bearer. That's pretty decent, actually. Uh, Mox Bony Bits. I'd want the cast and rolls for the bearer if they are 2 or more enemy monsters within 24. Add 2 to the cast and roll. Uh, and then Mystic War Paint. At the start of your hero phase, roll on the law of the Savage Beast table. Uh, the bearer can attempt to cast that spell... Uh, in the hero phase, in addition to any other spells. If the bearer already knows that spell, they can attempt to cast it one extra time. Very nice. So, the spells, uh, Squiggly Curse, um, I think is very similar. Breath of Gork and Morka is what was the Hand of Gork. So, this is a spell that you're going to see a lot of. Cast a value of 6. Pick a fr one friendly bone split as you wholly within 24. Until your next hero phase, double that unit's move characteristic. In addition, until your next hero phase, that unit can fly. If the casting roll was a double, triple that unit's movement characteristic instead of doubling it. Wow. All I'll say is 24 and 36 inch movement um, savage maniac ball boys. Yep. Brutal Beast Spirits is another one that I think you'll probably see. Uh, add one to the run and charge rolls for that unit. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by that unit. If the caster roll was a double, you can select two Bone Splitter units to be affected by it. Two Maniac Ball Boy units. Uh, bone Crusher. Uh, cast and ride of six. Uh, if successfully cast, pick an enemy unit within 24 of the caster. If the target is within six inches of the caster, they suffer D6 mortal wounds, D3 or one. Couldn't be spirits though. Um, cast a val value of six. Pick one friendly bone splitters unit. Hold it within 24. Add one to the save rolls. Now everything has a six up armor save. That takes them to a five. You can then stack that with something else as well. But yeah. Th there's going to be a lot of combos I think here. So we've also got the three allegiance abilities. Uh, so the Bone Grins, um, basically you can make additional charge moves. Uh, the Ice Bone 
abilities is if you make a wound roll of a six, it's an additional minus one rend. And this is the one that Ian used, and I think it was, you know, it was pretty decent. It was pretty decent. But this one, Drakfoot. <laughs> the ethereal ability has no effect on attacks made by Drakfoot units. In addition, uh, oh, ethereal. That's night haunt. Wow. Which means they they can rend night haunt. In addition, any ability that negates wounds has no effect on wounds inflicted by the Drakfoot unit. So all them death units with a six up shrug? Nope. Daughters of King Witches with a 5-up re-rollable? Nope. Nurgle? Nope. <laughs> Nobody gets it. I think you will see a lot of Drakfoot, to be honest. I really do. Um, so, the Mighty War abilities, uh, this is if you run them both together. They're basically all stack. You get to do, um, you make additional moves, plus one to hit, plus one to wound, and they will all stack with a spell. You need to run a very big army to be able to do this, or find some massive, massive combos. Uh, it does let you combine them, so you get a mount trait for an iron jaw, you get a mount trait for a um, so you get the spells and the chance and everything for them. Uh, once you do reach the maximum number of points, you can then uh, spend a command ability. It can reset your war points to nil. Uh, half them or leave them as is. So we'll skip all the Path to Glory stuff. And of course we'll go past the Iron Jaw stuff. So the... Is it the Cunning Rook that people use? Yeah. So this is obviously um, quite big. Because in your hero phase, pick one unit from this battalion that's wholly within 12. So the range is shorter and it's now wholly of the Savage Big Boss from the same battalion. This unit can make a normal move or shoot. Units in this battalion cannot have more than 20 models. So yeah. But it kind of works out because obviously they've shortened the range and has to be wholly within. Um, I wasn't sure what a lot of the other stuff did. So I'm not going to go through them all. But Snaggerok, you can re-roll charge rolls for units from this battalion. Whilst they are wholly within 12 of the Maniac Weird Knob. So... A lot of the battalions, I don't really see the point in them now. Um, we'll skip past the Iron Jaw units and jump straight in to the Savage uh, Orc stuff. Now, a lot of the profiles, I didn't know what they were previously. Uh, obviously, they're all available on the Games Workshop website now. So, if you want a further look at them, go and have a quick look. But there is a few things that, uh, obviously, Ian pulled on me, which I think would work quite well uh, in combinations. So, uh, this spell from the Wergog Prophet, right? So you can cast two spells, one and the Fist of Gork. The Fist of Gork is a cast and value of five. Pick an enemy unit within 24, not wholly within, and roll a number of dice equal to the number of models in the unit. For each six, you do a mortal wound. If the casting value was a ten or more, inflict one mortal wound for each four plus. That is very good, and it is very low to cast. Uh, the Savage Big Boss's command ability lets, uh, if you roll any sixes to hit, uh, they generate an extra attack. Now, that is important because it does stack uh, with a couple of the other things that um, we'll see a little bit later. In fact, where is it? There we go. Bone Spirit has a casting value of 7. Uh, if successfully cast, uh, pick a unit uh, wholly within 12. Um, each hit roll of a 6 scores an additional hit. So you use both of them, you're scoring 3 hits on a 6. Which is just unbelievable. Um, so the Wardock does his little dance and he can do a couple of different things. Uh, so you can pick a friendly unit and on a 3 plus uh, you can heal d3 wounds allocated to a, a model. Uh, you can add one to the save for the bone splitters here. So you can have guys with a 4 plus save if you combine that with the spell as well. Um, or a weird dock dance you can add one to cast value. So if you've got 2 or 3 of these um, 
you know, you can you can easily add plus one to cast on uh, on uh, one of these guys, and then you've got a better chance of casting the plus one armor spell, and then the other guy can then use the plus one um, dance for armor, meaning that you you know you've got a good chance. And the wizards aren't that expensive for these, so I think you know you've got a good chance of being able to stack your buffs. Um, again, I'm not entirely sure about what changed with all of these, but one thing I did see, and Ian realised near the end of the battle report, uh, big stabbers. This unit can run and still charge in the same turn. That's massive. Considering the move five, if you cast the additional move spell, you move in ten, possibly fifteen. Uh, and then, of course, if you add the extra attacks on a 6 to hit and stuff. So, what they did with the damage is they changed it slightly. So, it's 3 plus D3. No, sorry. The, the damage is D6 against monsters rather than 3 plus D3. So, it is a little bit of a nerf, but they can run and charge. So, that's not bad at all. Um, I know the... Oh, the spear guys. I don't know where they are. The spears actually got reasonably better. And the arrow boys uh, got slightly better, I think, as well. Because the plus one to hit rolls. Um, there, there was a couple of abilities that were plus one to hit. Um, there you go. Tusker chart. No, that's not them. Sorry. Somebody has plus one to hit. There we no, that's not them. There was an ability that was plus one to hit, right? But it does work on the arrow boys, which means that they would be uh, hitting on fours. But the sixes from the dance uh, or the spell to cause additional hits also work on these because it's not just in the combat phase. Uh, it is just any to hit rolls. Um, so yeah, a big unit of these. With that on, uh, generating extra attacks on a 6 to hit is actually quite good. But, the Savage Ball Boy Maniacs are what I want to talk about. Because these are a little bit brutal. Okay? So, the Battle Line. They are Battle Line. And Ian ran a unit of 10. And I think a couple of units of these could seriously wreak havoc. Okay? So... First of all, you get an extra attack, so you get five attacks if there's five or more models in the unit. You use the command ability and the spell or dance to generate extra attacks on a six, right? Which means you've suddenly, a unit of ten of these has 50 attacks. Any sixes to hit are causing an additional two hits, okay? You can actually get plus two to hit on them, so that they're hitting on twos. Uh, one of the sorry plus one to hit so they're hitting on threes, um, but yeah, so you can get them to hitting on threes. The uh, add two to the charge rolls and you add one for the spell as well, so you you're plus three to charge. You cast the spell on them to make them move uh, double the distance, so they now move 12, then that, that means they go 24, with plus 3 to charge and fly. <laughs> See where I'm going with this. Um, and of course, if you if you do run the uh, allegiance to 6s to wound R-1 rent, it does help as well. The tusks and hooves will get plus 1, plus 2 to wound. I'll say again, plus 2 to hit. Uh, with the spell, plus one to wound, uh, for also making a charge move as well. So, with a four plus armor on them as well, you know, you can seriously buff some savage ball boy maniacs. Uh, bearing in mind, you can take them in a unit of 20. And you have to be very careful with placement, because obviously a lot of the abilities have to be holy within 12. Um, but the possibility of being able to make Savage Ball Boy Maniacs incredibly brutal is definitely there. Um, so I, I think there's a lot to be said. There's a lot of buffs from a lot of small point characters uh, for the Bone Splitters. Um, and I, th I think Bone Splitters are actually a little bit better than Iron Jaws, if I'm honest. But we will see what happens. We will probably have an Iron Jaw versus Bone Splitter. 
uh, match between myself and Ian and see who comes off better. But that is the, the bone splitter side of the Auric War Clans Battle Ton, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please check out Battle Bunker if you wish to pre order this at a discount. And of course, a massive thank you uh, to Games Workshop for sending this out for us to review. Uh, but until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.